Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Mm. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. In the very, they call her in the act. Committing adultery on her husband. But the crazy thing about it, what the man there? <laughs> right. He committed adultery too. On his wife. See, that's why God had to take the judgment out of the priest's hand because they were judged unrighteously. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says that? Oh, he wanted to tell them about the law. But he didn't bring the man too there. She was committing adultery on Caught in the act now. That's right. He wanted to judge the woman. Kill her. No, you don't do that. Go ahead. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. Yes, sir. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And Jesus said, man, I ain't even trying to hear y'all, but I'm going to deal with y'all in a minute. He stooped down to the ground. He's like, okay, say what you got to say. He going to shut the all day mouth up in a minute. Go ahead. Seven. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at him. Woo. Come on. Now he flipped it on them. <laughs> flipped it now. Amen. No, they were sinning. They didn't even bring the man. And they knew in their mind, like, dog, I just sinned a couple of hours ago. I didn't bring my blood sacrifice then. <laughs> because back then, you know, it's still blood sacrifice. Right. You had to take it to the priest. This is what he's saying. Let you, without sin, cast the first stone. What happened? Go ahead. Verse 8. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. <laughs> they were thinking about that thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. So the oldest person and the young person, they just start walking out, man. We can't kill that lady. We all got sin. We all dirty. We all dirty. That's why it's so hard for us to come up against anybody and try to condemn them. When I first started learning the truth, I used to try to start condemning for like, you going to hell, you going to hell, and I had to check myself. No, you can't say that, Jeff. That ain't your job. You just tell them what thus says the Lord and give them to repent for they done what they done. Your camera on. Camera's camera, camera on. Go ahead, bro. Verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have like no one. Go ahead. Have no man condemned thee? You're like, where your accusers at? Who gonna, gonna condemn you? You're gonna throw the first stone. God forgave her then. This is what he said. Go ahead. Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Mm. He said, Lord, you got your sins forgiven. Go and sin no more. Mm. We can't be the ones that are always condemn, 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 condemn. We just say it. Like, man, that's sin, right? That's in that swine sin. All right, you gonna go, you gonna, you can go to hell now if you don't repent. We'll just say, you're going to go to hell for the next wine. We'll, we'll leave out the repent part. Because I had to check my conversation. Put the repent part in there. Put it in there. We finish with that? Yes, sir. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 13. See, we have to be careful in judging with our outwardly eye. We have to be careful with that because we don't know why God killed a person. Or why he make it alive. That's his job, not ours. And believe me, I had to repent for this when I read this particular scripture, what I said. I said, the reason why Breonna Taylor and George Floyd got killed because they ain't keeping the law. No, I don't know that. That's God's way. His, he's the one who the judge and the killer to make it alive. I can't say that because I don't know the mind of God. I don't know it. So I had to repent when I saw that. And I read this particular scripture. I said, oh, okay. I stand corrected. Because I don't know. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. Let me show you the example I'm talking about. How you judge incorrectly. Go ahead, verse 1. There were present at that, at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So Pilate was killing the Galileans with that, uh, mingled with their sacrifices. 
But listen to the conversation that Jesus had with uh, the disciples at this time. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. He said, suppose, he asked them a question. You think there was sinners above all things? This is what Jesus said. Go ahead. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. See how we thinking? Just because they died, we thinking that they sinned against God. No. We don't know that. I don't know that. So I had to repent. Because Christ said, Ray, I tell you not, I mean, no. But he told you another thing. But except you repent, you end up just like them. Perishing, dying. This is what we got to get in our mind. Stop focusing on the sin that a person doing. And start focusing on telling them, hey, man, you need to repent. Oh, hey, I need to repent. Like I said before, I say it all the time. I said it one time before. Hey, man, the people die because they sinned against God. I don't know that. Go ahead. Verse 4. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? There were about 18 people that were slew by a tower falling on them. What did Jesus say? Go ahead. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. You see how we judge with the naked eye, we don't see what's going on? Mm. He said, look, you focus on repent. Don't be focused on, oh, I wonder why God killed him or killed her. Why they, no, they're dead. They can't do nothing else. The dead know nothing. You need to figure out what they done, how they offend God, or what did God do through the scriptures. And I'm going to show you one example of that. Go ahead. We finish? Uh, yeah. Verse we read five? Yes. Okay. Let me show you a good example of that about judging people because of death. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 14. You just can't save people. Dying because of sin. We're going to look at Jeroboam here. This wicked king whose son fell sick. And he thought it was something he did. He trying to figure out what's going on with the boy because he was dying. That's why we can't be so quick to judge to make it out. We don't know why these people die. I don't know why these people die. die. I don't know. And believe me. You know me, I hate to be wrong, but I got to call a spade a spade. Verse 1. Let's look at Jeroboam here. First Kings chapter 14, verse 1. Go ahead. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. By his son, I'm still sick. Go ahead. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. And get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is a hydra, the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. He said, man, there's a prophet that can tell me the answer why my son is dead. Or what dying, excuse me. Go ahead. Verse 3, and take with thee ten loaves and cracknels and a cruise, a cruise of honey yes, and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. So you know what? They always got to go to Israel now. We got to have some answers. And this is what this, this is what Jeroboam knew. I got to go to the Israelites know what's going on in God's book. Because God going to tell him why his kid is dying. Go ahead. Verse 4, and Jeroboam's wife did so mm -hmm. and arose and went to Shiloh. And came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. So he was about blind. He couldn't see. Go ahead. But listen to the Lord exposed her. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask the thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it shall be, when she cometh in, that she shall feign herself to be another woman. She's going to be in disguise to be another woman. He said, but God, see how God told the prophet? He couldn't see. He said, this woman coming out ain't going to disguise herself, but I want you to tell her this. Go ahead. And it was so, when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, that he said, come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. <laughs> Why faintest thou thyself to be another? Why? I bet she was saying, man, how you know that? I'm disguised. <laughs> come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Go ahead. Why faintest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Mm. Go, Go tell Jeroboam, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. 
For as much as I exalted thee from among the people and made thee prince over my people Israel. Yes, sir. And rent the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments. And so he said, he said, you ain't been like your father David. You didn't keep the commandments. So he took the kingdom away from him. Took the kingdom away from him because of what? He didn't keep the commandments. Go ahead. Who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart to do that only which was right in mine eyes. See, David did what was right. That was pleasing to God to keep the commandments. Make sure we do this exact same thing. Coming together on the Sabbath day. Keeping the dietary law. Keeping the high holy days. We doing the exact same thing as our forefathers. Go ahead. Verse 9. But has but has done evil above all that were before thee. That's the problem. He had done evil. Like a lot of people don't know, when you do evil, you sin. And some people say, well, it's just a little lie, a white lie. No, that's sin. It ain't white, black, or yellow. It's sin. <laughs> Go ahead. But, but has done evil above all that were before thee. Yes, sir. For thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and has cast me behind thy back. This is what Jeroboam do, okay? He went and made other gods. Molten images and worship them like they like that was his God. God hate that. Just like he hate when we go and put Christmas trees up in our house. He hate when you put crosses on churches. He hate when you put crosses on your chest and way. He hate when you put Jesus pieces on your chest. You don't know what Jesus looked like. We just got a description. Who is that on your chest? This is a man description. He said, I spoke to you out of similitude. I didn't want you to see my face. How you gonna put that image on you? Go ahead. Verse 10. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. He's gonna bring evil. Go ahead. And will cut off from and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth the that pisseth against the wall. Uh -huh. That means that all the men who piss him gonna get killed. All his kids. Go ahead. And him that is shut up and left in Israel. Yes, sir. And will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam. As a man taketh away dumb till it be all gone. Go ahead. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. Mm. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord has spoken. Now the Lord talking about all that death, how he gonna deal with Jeroboam and his sons. But his one son, he seen some good in him. But he's still gonna die. That's why I say you can't judge death by sin. Next verse, go ahead. 12. Arise thou therefore, get thee to thine own house. And when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. He said, the child gonna die. But death is not always bad in God's eyes. In our eyes, we're like, man, I miss my son. He a young guy. Well, listen what happened. Go ahead. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him. Mm -hmm. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave. Because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Wait a minute. God killed him because he found some good in it? Death ain't always bad. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. You can't judge death saying it's bad. God said, I see some good in him. We can't see that. It was right for him to die at that time. Like certain people, it's right for them to die. They might have been on that deathbed giving the last breath and repented. God said, okay, time to take them. We don't know. That's why I had to go and repent. When I said something about Breonna Taylor, when I said something about George Floyd, I said, I don't know that. Lord, forgive me for saying that. Because God right here killed this boy because he saw some good in it. Mm -hmm. You finish with that? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. See, God left this word in every generation. But it's these false prophets is not telling us. They're not reading the book. Repentance is the key to, to unlock salvation. It's the key. But you got no laws. If you don't know the law, you just out here just walking around here willy nilly and be dying. It don't want like me when I'm if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die a bit. I'm walking around eating all these sweets. I'm thinking I'm feeling good. My sugar high as the sky. I'm about to die. Diabetic coming, boom. But I got a test, I can test my blood. So it's just like God. He said, I gave you a test to test your mind, which is the law. To get it back under control. Just like I got a tester. It says my blood. I don't need to eat no more of that sugar. Well, I need to find me something to take my sugar down. Like we need to find something to take that sin down, which is repenting. Mm -hmm. That's what God telling us. 
And he's given it to us in every generation through the mouth of his prophets in the churches. This book, very fine. Revelation chapter 2, we're going to start with verse 1. Go ahead, bro. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. The seven who walk, stars are the seven angels. Go ahead. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The seven golden candlesticks are the churches. In every generation, you're going to have a church of God. Amen. Every generation, you're going to have a church of God. Go ahead. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Yes, sir. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles uh -huh. and are not and hast found them liars. See, this is the problem. We can't find nobody if we don't know the law. How you gonna find? Them? If they found that these people were liars, they'll be here on the Sabbath day instead of in church on Sunday. They be here on the high holy day, which is tabernacle, instead of being in church on Christmas, on Easter. These are the things that God is pissed off about. He can't stand it. Your prayers are abomination to him when you choose somebody else, God's over him. Mm. This is what he's saying about these lying apostles. They're lying. You found them. I found them lying. That's why we speak so hard on them. They're killing the whole world. And they got the same book, what I have right here. It won't read it. it. Won't show you how to repent and get things right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Yes, sir. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. What is the first love? If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he's telling us. Go ahead. Verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, yes, sir. and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. He said, remember, thy first work, the first work is keeping the commandments, being here on the Sabbath day, that's work. He said, you omitted the weightier matters of the law, for some tithe, of cumin, and they, all they worry about the tithe. But they omitted the way to matter, which is the Sabbath day, the dietary law, the high holy days. They ain't worried about that. All they worried about materialistic stuff. He said, remember therefore when thou art fallen and repent. He wants us to repent and do this first work. Or else I will come quickly. What do you mean come quickly? A thief come quickly if you don't know when he's coming. And that's how Christ going to come to the word quickly. Because they didn't read the book. How he's coming. Go ahead. You finished for that? Jump down to verse uh, 15. 13. 13. I got some bad hand right. Jump down to verse 13. Go ahead. I know thou works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. God said, I know your works. And where you dwell, even Satan's seat is. Did I say 15 or 13? 13. Okay. Yeah, 13. You good. But he telling you, he's looking at everything. He know all the works of everybody. But do you know, or do I know the workers of Satan? Because the workers of Satan, we'd be confused. He's a great counterfeiter. He'll say the name of Jesus all day long. Also, he'll say the name of Yahweh, Yahshua, Yahoshua. But you got to be able to try his spirit through the word of God and know if he's telling you the truth. Go ahead. 14. But I have a few things against thee. Yes, because sir. thou hast there, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine, doctrine of Balaam. What is Balaam? It's a false god. You hold this doctrine. Of Balaam. All these false, man, they got what? Ramadan. Where they catch fasting 30 days or 40 days. That's a doctrine of Balaam. That's a false God. God told us to fast one day for the day of atonement. What our Muslim brothers doing? Oh man, I'm fast for wrong done. And they find joy in that. And they do it, they labor is in vain. They should have just fast one day. That's all God required. They doing it for 40, 30, whatever they do it for. You're holding this doctrine of Balaam. I'm just gonna give you some examples. And they, they are not repenting from it. Go ahead. 
But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, yes, sir. to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. See, these are the people who lead you to eat things that God do, want, do not want you to eat against the laws of God. He tell me, they taught these people this, Balaam of Balak. Go ahead. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. He Nicolaitans, he hate. Them Nicolaitans, those are the ones in the land today who call themselves us. The Jews that they are not. They are the synagogues of Satan. He hate them. You want to know God? God said he hate, right? He the only one that can hate. We can't hate because God knows the ends and out of a person. Go ahead. 16. Repent. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. Do what? Repent. He telling you to repent, or he'll come quickly. Repent of your sin, because we don't know when we're gonna die. I don't know the day I'm gonna die, so I'm gonna stand repenting every day. Cause I don't want to come quick. I'm gonna lay it down and then ask God for forgive him for my sin. Them sins still out there. Repent often. I said, Lord, forgive me for the sins I have done and the ones I don't know about. Go ahead. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He gonna fight you. We already know when that fight is. That's when the seven trumpet he come with all his holy angels and the saints. We don't want that. We want to be in that army instead of being attacked by that army. This is what we got. This thing's serious now. You finish that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Seventeen. He that had the ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Do you ever hear, ear to hear this? Or if your mind elsewhere? If your mind elsewhere, that means that you don't give a hoot about what God is saying in this book right now. A lot of people don't care. And they're going to ask God when they get in trouble, Lord, oh, help me, help me, help me. She's like, hey, you, you remember you, you said you didn't care about me and keep my law? Well, I'm going to help you. He's going to laugh at you. Read Proverbs chapter 1. He said, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. Because I'm going to bring the calamity on you. Hmm. Go ahead. Middle of 17. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden man. That's what we want. Go ahead. And we'll give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written. Which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. That's in the first resurrection. We give you a white stone name. And no man really means that. They can't take you out of that book of life. You hate that. We hate that. Acts chapter 2. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let me show you how to get this camera still. Bring it on going later right now. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. See, we got to know how to get God's ears unlocked. Repentance is one part, but this is how you really start to get access to it. We got to have the access code. Yes, sir. Verse 36. Go ahead. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly yes, that sir. God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, these people have crucified Jesus, and they find out that he really he is the Lord. Savior. Yes, sir. And now they're trying to figure out what can we do to get back this right? Listen to what they listen to what they told him. Go ahead. 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Man, that thing hit him like a rock. <coughs> you ever done something in your mind that you know you shouldn't do? You know the pain is coming? You're like, it was pricked in their heart, me in their mind, got to think about, man, we done messed up to the tip power. We done killed the Lord and Savior. But he had to die. They really just don't understand. They fulfill the prophecy anyway. But listen to how he told them to get it right. Go ahead. 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Yes, sir. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What's the first thing he said? Repent, Repent. and be baptized. In what name? In the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's powerful, man. I hear all these brothers and sisters out here who in these different camp kick against the name of Jesus. That's the most powerful name in the world. Yes, it is. He said, My name shall be great amongst who? The Gentiles. Who do the Gentiles know? Do they know Yahweh? No, sir. Do they know Yahshua? 
No, the Gentile, the European, they know Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. So don't kick against that name because you said the letter J only came out to 1600. I've been through that so many years. Yes, sir. And God said, I'm going to speak to you with a stamina look in another tongue. Amen. That means that you're going to be scattered all over this world, Israel. You're going to be scattered in France, Greece, China. You're going to be speaking another tongue. If you say Jesus, boom, in that language, he accepts that. He's the one that confused the language on the Tower of Battle of Babylon. He gave them the languages. And you think Jesus don't understand them languages? Don't be simple in the mind. Learn your God. Repent. That's what you need to be worried about. This is for all my Hebrew brothers. Because they spent too much time on this crap. Too much. Go ahead. Verse 39. For the promises unto you and to your children. See, this is how important it is. It's not just for you. If you love your kid, you should be introducing them, introduce them to the actions of God, to what he wants, the characteristics, how to please him. That's right. This is what he's saying. He said, this is the promise unto you and your children. Go ahead. And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Go ahead. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. And I'm saying the same thing. Amen. Save yourself. Yes, sir. From this untoward generation, your friends, yes, and most of all your family, they're going to be your worst enemies because they're going to think that you're in a cult mm -hmm. and they cannot read nothing where you're doing anything wrong. Only thing they can understand is what grandma said, what grandpa said, what mama said. No, mama, what the book said. This is what people got to understand this book. Repent and get in line with the book. We finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to first. Go ahead, go ahead. 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Yes, sir. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Ooh. That's what he's saying. Be baptized. This is how you get the Holy Spirit. This is how he can lead you to all truth. Skip that next verse. Let's go to John chapter 14. Let me show you something about his Holy Spirit. We're going to go back to that. John 14. We got to know how a God work. Don't you sit up and listen to me. <laughs> God, I can mess some stuff up. Go back and read this stuff. I'm about to say something wrong. You study, show yourself approved. Come on. John 14, verse. 12. We got to know how to unlock him, man. So he can hear us, so he can send us this Holy Spirit when we baptize. The comforter. He's the comforter that we need to lead and guide us to truth. Verse 12, go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Yes, sir. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. What did Jesus do when he was went into the synagogues? He preach on what? On the Sabbath. This is what we're doing now. He said the works, right? He, we got to follow the works of Christ. That's what Christian mean. Follow, that what Christian mean. Follow with Christ. I know they got a problem with that too. But understand, get into the book and follow the instructions so you can repent from all your sins. Go ahead. 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You got to ask in his name. If you speak English, and that's all you speak, it's Jesus. If you speak Spanish, it's Spanish, it's Jesus. That's all the names I know, man. Jesus. <laughs> I if you speak Hebrew, it's Yahshua. It's so many names in Hebrew. Yahshua, Yahoshua, Muhammad Shia, uh, all that stuff. I just know English. That's it. I can't give a lesson in Hebrew. I can't. Go ahead. 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So you ask him in his name. If you repent from your sins, he said, Lord, will you do this for me? But that's the access right now. You got to get the access right. Be baptized. Repent for it. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then he will go to the Father for you. Go ahead. 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes, sir. If you love me, keep my commandments. Them two big ifs. Right. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you ask anything in my, in my name, I will give it to you. That's an if, but it's very big. 
Follow you know the commandments. How you gonna ask? You don't know if you're sinning. You don't know if you're sinning anything. How you ask? Like I told you, Satan, he can give you blessing too. 